I had some time when I was incarcerated for shoplifting, stealing, things of that nature. I really didn't take it seriously then, but the last time I was there, it was just a devastating blow. I was there and I was like, is this all that life has to offer me? It affects your employment status. You're surrounded by different types of people. Let's just put it that way. It can be a violent atmosphere. There's drugs there. There's still people breaking law inside the prison. I just don't want to go back to that. Jail was just utterly <laughs> disgusting to me. Even though I was on drugs and it was certain things that still was disgusting to me. The whole process just drove me out of my mind. It was like it was a soda machine in the hole. I wanted the soda and I had money in jail, but I couldn't have a soda. <laughs> it was things like that, small things like that, that just drove me absolutely insane. I had got arrested for narcotics. My first incarceration, I had got caught in a house raid and I was terrified. I was 18 years old and it was my first experience. The second time I got arrested, they didn't give me a bail. I wound up going to jail, not city jail. I went down to Jessup. I can't even really remember exactly what I felt, but I know I was terrified. After I got there, I found out that it was a lot of people that I grew up with that was there. A lot of people from around my neighborhood was there. So it kind of made me feel just a little bit more comfortable of being there. but. Mentally, being locked in a cell, not being able to get up and leave when you want to, not being able to, to bathe when you want to, but when they tell you to. It's kind of hard for me to adapt to at first. But it comes a point when you're there, you tell yourself mentally that, okay, it's not going to last forever. So you start talking to yourself mentally, just trying to keep sanity. Because I was seeing people hang themselves, and, you know, I, I just didn't want to be that weak. My family, they did what they could for me while I was there. And I watched these women there that's going to be there for the rest of their lives. And I told myself I didn't want to be one of them. It had to be something better. When I got incarcerated, I was really on my own. And at the time, I was serving a short-term sentence at MCIW, which is Maryland Correctional Institution for Women. If you're under a certain amount of time, they really don't do much for you. And I fell under that two years, so I couldn't get any programs there. And they weren't going to help me get into anything out of there. So whatever I did, I had to do myself. I don't think drug, drug addicted people need to be behind bars. That is not a solution. You're just using up taxpayers' money on a problem that cannot be answered by you throwing them in jail because when they get back out, they're going to do the same thing. That's why you have so many repeat offenders. Sentencing them to mandatory NA meetings and also counseling because a lot of people that use have some kind of trauma. You're giving people 10 years over a pill or crack is not going to deter them from using crack. You're just going to have a bunch of people in the penal system that you can't get rid of just sitting there. So you're going to have to spend another couple million dollars to build another jail.
when you're not doing anything to help the problem. Where all you're doing is covering up. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot. A background doesn't always say that's exactly what a person is going to turn out to be. You have to give people a chance to prove that, that they've truly changed. I do believe that those that have been through some type of incarceration, those type of people can be some of the best workers because of that. You know, they know that once they get in with a particular job, they're going to stay there. Why? Because you already have experience of knowing that someone didn't give you a chance. So you might be sort of like, oh, thank God, somebody gave it, you know, someone else has opened up their heart to give you an opportunity. If you sit down and you talk to a person, hear some of their story, hear about where they've been, and what they're trying to do today. Just give a person a chance. I don't want to be standing on my feet all day, you know, because no one else gave me a chance. They figure, you know, she's, you know, she's a freaking thief. I'm not a thief today.